and welcome back to Let's Play Breath of Fire 2. Last time, we got our first official job as rangers, and it looks like all directions are pointing us to Mount Fubi. But before we head there, we actually want to stop in this apartment building. This is actually where uh, Ryu and Bo's room is located. And there's a couple of things we can raid from the shelves and the cupboards. What do you got to say, kid? Yeah, I, I can see that. As Bo points out, this is our room, but we can rest here if we need to, but we don't need to. We haven't even fought anything yet. At least not as adults. But the main reason I've come here is because we have a small amount of money tucked away, 100 coins, which is a nice little bonus. I'm actually going to be selling that life pill we picked up last episode because uh, at this point the life pill isn't too useful. We've only got two party members, and, uh, spoiler, that's going to be dwindled down to one party member in the near future, so, uh, the life pill isn't really going to serve us any benefit at this point. So, instead, let's just sell that life pill for 250. Which is a pretty nice bonus. I'm going to buy some herbs here. Herbs are very cheap and very cost-effective way of healing. I'll just buy a six stack there. If you buy them individually, uh, they'll go into the, your uh, inventory as a single item, but there's a sword option that can stack them all together. You have a limited inventory space in this game, so you want to make uh, use of those uh, features. Now I'm going to be buying a bronze sword for Jeff here. Uh, the reason I'm buying the bronze sword is because he is actually our point character at the moment, so he's going to be doing the most damage. While also taking more, so let's uh, have him do more in return. I'll get into stuff like character formations and the uh, more uh, nitty gritty of the statistics in this game when it becomes relevant. Anyway, here's a dragon statue. When we were a child, we couldn't really examine this thing. But now uh, he's just lamenting the fact that nobody really prays to the dragon god anymore. The dragon god was the way you save your game in the original Breath of Fire, but he has kind of fallen out of favor and the new religion is Saint Eva. And he's a bit depressed that he's not really worshipped too much anymore, but he'll live and let live. But since we can talk to him, uh, we can tell uh, him the story of our journey, and that's just the way you save the game. You bet your sweet Vippy I will. Now, when you save your game, it saves to the file that you created. If you want to make multiple save files, you have to copy that file. Anyways, that's uh, all the business that I want to take care of. Is everything in order? I just want to get this. Uh, ah, so that was what it was. I thought you'd get the fast tech speed by just scrolling over it. Alright. Oh, hey, there's a carnival in town. Do we have any money? Yeah, we still got some money. Let's go on in. I suppose, I mean, we could do something interesting like fight monsters, but why do that? Wind is quite a ways from here. You guys are really into the whole touring thing, huh? Grass man, huh? We'll see this uh, strange living animal for ourselves. But yes, this is the carnival. There's a camel here. He just spits at you. Yeah, yeah. There's a turtle. Now, you can't actually feed the turtle, I don't think. Uh, if you buy the turtle feed, it just uh, goes into your inventory as a worm you can use for fishing bait. I don't know, the turtle's cute. Oh, well, let's go see this grass man that they're talking about. Alright. Huh. It is a strange looking fellow. Is he here of his own free will, though? Hey, come on, we're not that young. Anyway, what's this guy's deal over here? Uh, okay, I, I've heard this riddle before, but I think he kind of uh, messed up the uh, explanation. Well, that was the carnival. It wasn't too interesting. That grass man, though, was kind of intriguing. I wonder what his deal is. Now, there is a couple things we could do around town. Namely, we could do some fishing. There's a fishing spot that appears uh, every once in a while to the left there. But uh, we only have a real dinky tree pole right now that snaps real easily, so we'll save fishing for another time. Let's get into some fighting. 
These gong heads are just weaker versions of the beak monster that we fought as a child. So, uh, if Ryu could stand up to them as a child, then Jeff, as a man, should be able to stand up to them pretty fine right now. Uh, besides spells and items, each character has a special command. Jeff's is that he can use his guts to restore his HP. Bo's is actually a very interesting one. It's the shot attack, and this attack, if it connects, it's an instant kill. If it doesn't work, it just does one HP of damage. Certain enemies in the game are more susceptible to shot than others. There are actually a number of uh, instant death attacks in this game, and they actually all work pretty well. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, the way uh, Jeff's guts works is that if you use the guts at lower HP, the more it restores. I think at uh, the absolute most it can restore is about 5 eighths, and that's when you're in basically as critical a, a situation as you can be. Anyways, those guys gave us some pretty good experience, and we get the time warp ability. Uh, now, I believe the original name for this ability was actually more along the lines of rest. And uh, what this ability does is it fast forwards the day night cycle until night time. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest with you, day and night doesn't really mean too much in this game. There's a couple instances in the first Breath of Fire game where you could only progress in the story if it was day or night, but uh, in this game it really doesn't mean anything. In fact, there's only one instance I can recall off the top of my head where you'd want it to be day or night. Or rather, you'd want it to be night rather than day. Otherwise, the two times are basically say the same as far as the game is concerned. Now you may have noticed... Ooh, here's a special thing. If we go into these grass areas just by examining them, we can go into a little hunting minigame. And Bo? Well, he has a bow, so he can shoot these uh, animals. There we go! It's very difficult to actually get those because the shot is very slow. Well, we got a roast there. Let's check that out when we get out of here. Now, the roast is a healing item. I believe it restores HP to all of your characters? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it spells for pretty good money at this point, so I might just hang on to it so I can sell it. Anyways, now that that's done, uh, let's get into the more nitty-gritty of battles itself. You saw in that last battle, or rather the one with the... Uh, yeah, no, it was the one with the E-Sludges. Uh, when Jeff got attacked there, he launched a counterattack, and that hurt. But that's a unique ability to Jeff. Only one other character we get in the game can actually do that. If he gets a physical attack, there's a chance he'll launch a counterattack. I don't exactly know what determines the odds that he'll get a counterattack. I think it might be related to the luck stat, but I don't know for sure. Anyway, here's a good opportunity to show off Guts. There you go, this is a decent amount. There is a small chance, though, that uh, Guts can fail. I think it's like a 12% chance that Guts will fail and just only heal like 1 HP or something. But yeah, uh, Jeff's counterattacks, I believe they're influenced by the luck stat. If not, they might be influ influenced by the condition stat. It's not really clear what either of those stats do, so I'm just guessing. I've just noticed that as my luck increases, uh, it seems to uh, increase my counter attacks independent of my uh, uh, condition stat. Anyways, the reason I'm fighting so many enemies here is, uh, well, one, just show them off. Uh, all the enemies around here are pretty uh, vanilla. The gong head is probably the most dangerous just because he can hit the hardest. The rest of them, all they do is pretty much just attack. We've also got Auto Battle, just uh, causes you to launch normal attacks. Before we get onto Mount Fubi, I want to hit level 3, and then once we're in Mount Fubi itself, I want to get to level 5. Uh, those levels, they're not necessary, it's just what I feel is the safest for uh, defeating the boss that we fight on Mount, Mount Fubi. Which, inter interestingly, uh, the boss we fight on Mount Fubi actually happens about halfway through it rather than at the end. Anyways, here's the last new enemy around here, the Hunchback. Again, just a very basic enemy, all it does is attack, really. I've never really noticed any of the enemies around here doing anything particularly special. Well, this one can defend. Didn't do him a whole lot of good, though. I mentioned earlier that uh, Jeff is the point character, so he'll deal and take more damage. Right now, our characters are lined up in the normal formation. In that formation, the lead character... Uh, deals 30% more damage, but also takes 30% more damage. 
Uh, Bo is in the second slot. He takes neutral damage and deals neutral damage, so he's basically running on the basic parameters for the characters. The other formation we have is the Scramble formation, and in that formation, there's actually two point characters, and together they deal 20% more damage, but also take 20% more damage. So if I wanted to maximize my damage, it would be a good idea to use the Scramble formation, but right now I'd rather stick with the normal. Alright, level 3. We just need to get one more level for Bo before we can head up to Fubi Mountain. Once I uh, get a bit stronger and battles become shorter, I'll be uh, cutting out random battles and just showing off Bo's Cure spell there, which he learned at level 2. But for now, they're very short and we can just show them off. I think once I get on the Mount Fubi and I've shown off all the enemies, then I'll start cutting out battles until I get to the level I want to be. I typically don't like level grinding, but this is an earlier RPG where you don't really have much of a choice. Uh, your strategies are going to be very much on the cheesy side if you don't uh, gain some levels to uh, actually contend with things. Alright, at level 3, Bow gains Cure Poison. Also at level 3, uh, this is the point where our characters can walk onto Mount Fubi and not get totally annihilated by the enemies around here. Is that you, Bo? No, I thought it was you, man. But yeah, Mount Fubi. Uh, got some very relaxing music. Let's uh, see if we can get in some fights around here. Alright, the small goblins. These guys uh, tend to appear in large numbers. This is one of the few formations where they don't. And as you can see, they're hitting quite hard. If uh, we were at level 3 right now and we ran to like a group of 5 of these guys, I would have to, no choice but to run away. Look! Uh, also, if they get hurt, they run away too. Luckily, there's not too much of a penalty for death in Breath of Fire 2. Uh, you get booted back to the last save point you used, and uh, I think you lose a little bit of your money, like half of it. But it's not too terrible. Usually I'm not carrying around much money anyways, because stuff is just so expensive that I end up having to spend it all. And when I don't, I usually put it all into the bank. Alright, leeches. These guys, very weak, but they appear in large groups, just like the small goblins. Unlike the small goblins, we can actually pretty consistently kill these guys in one hit. Now you may have noticed that a lot of attacks are being directed at Jeff's direction. Directed at Jeff's... whatever. But yeah, a lot of attacks are going towards Jeff. That's because he's the lead character. The chance of a character getting determined is just uh, based on her uh, position in the party order. Since Jeff's the first character, uh, he has a 5 and 8 chance of being attacked, I think it is, and that just gets lower from there. Widows! These are the first enemies that can actually poison you. And also, they're kind of wrecking me. You may have noticed that we're not really outspeeding too many of the enemies here. Uh, mm, let's see. Actually, I'm just going to try and run. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jeff's going to bite it right here. But the reason I'm not too worried about that is because we're right by a healing fountain. Of course, if uh, Bo refuses to run away, then we're pretty much done for here. Alright, we got one more chance. Or that's it. Oh, yeah, we're done for. But, yeah, I expect to see that a lot. There's not really much I could have done about that. I wouldn't have been able to beat them in a straight fight. And if I had just, uh... Um... What was I trying to say? Well, basically, I couldn't have beaten them in a straight fight and I failed to run away, so... Yeah, I get killed. But, we didn't really have that much money anyway, so no biggie. It is a bit lame that I die in the second video, but uh, if you saw my East 1 and 2 Let's Play, dying to very embarrassingly easy things is kind of something I do. Uh, poison, as you might have noticed, uh, it doesn't actually do anything in battle. The damage poison deals to you is purely on the field, so you actually don't really have to worry about it while you're in a fight. We can actually safely auto-battle this. Even though the Widow was something that killed us last time, uh, on its own it's not too threatening, especially when it's paired up with leeches. As you can see, Jeff's counterattack takes care of one of those leeches right away, so the Widow itself is not too threatening. But you can see why I want to get to level 5 before moving on. If the regular enemies are completely destroying me, odds are I won't do too well against the bosses.
There's uh, one more new enemy in this cave, and then when we find that, I'll cut ahead to uh, when we're level 5 and we can move on. This healing fountain right here is very nice, because not only does it restore your HP, it also restores your AP. So it's basically the same as a full rest. Let's see if I can't find the new enemy. And I probably should just uh, try and at least take out one of these guys. It would have made it safer to try and run away if I had let Bo take out one of the guys. Alright, that counterattack is actually uh, very well-timed. But, uh, Jeff is probably going to die on this. Oh, no. See, sometimes it helps to be lucky. Get poisoned? Just use the healing fountain. Poison actually decreases your HP really fast on the field, though, so it is still a dangerous status effect, even if it doesn't really do anything in battle. Eh, yeah, more small goblins. There's just one more type of enemy that I'm looking for around here, and then we can move on. This one will probably, yeah, run away. That's pretty unfortunate when that happens, because the small goblins actually give out pretty good money. Ah, more widows. It would be nice if I could get the counterattack more reliably, but it is pretty strictly luck-based. Uh, there is one thing to note about areas where you can encounter enemies. Uh, you may have noticed in the menu screen there's that little goblin that uh, when we were in the town area he was sleeping. Alright, level 4 there. But uh, if we look at him now, he's dancing and he's pretty jittery. Uh, the speed at which the goblin dances lets you know what the encounter rate around the area is. So if he's dancing faster and more jittery, that means there's more... Uh, monsters in the area that you could potentially run into. Ah, I keep getting... Ah, repeats. Well, here's what we'll do. Uh, after this fight, I'll just cut ahead to when we get to the monster I want to show off, and then after that I'll cut ahead to when we're level 5. Alright, so just take this guy out. Alright, and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Corpses. These guys have a, a gimmick to them that's uh, around with a few enemies. Basically, they have a very high chance of missing, but when they do hit, it's pretty much always a critical hit. And yeah, that's that. So I'll just cut ahead to when we're level 5, so see you then. Alright, Jeff has moved to level 5, Bo moved to level 5 in the battle before this, and he actually learned a very important spell, Defense Up. Defense Up is a single target buffing spell, you put it, up, put it on a character and it raises their defense, pretty simple. It increases defense by about 50%, and that actually reduces damage by a lot more than you'd think. Uh, that's actually another reason specifically why I'd like to get to level 5, is this boss fight coming up. The bosses are going to be focusing exclusively pretty much on Jeff, no matter uh, who's in the lead position. So by casting defense up on him, he'll take way less damage and it'll make the fight a lot easier. And level 5 is just a good level to be at because you're dealing pretty good damage to them and they'll be dealing slightly less damage to you just on the basis your defense stat is better. Now, of course, since we're walking away from the healing fountain, we're not going to be able to just step up and immediately heal ourselves back to full. That's why I bought that stack of healing herbs e earlier. Healing herbs are ridiculously cheap, and they heal 40 HP just like a Cure 1 spell, which... Ow. Ah, the stupid... Ah, the virtual console port, whenever you tap the Wii U's touch screen, it brings up that menu. But anyways, like I was saying, uh, herbs, really cheap, heal the same as a Cure spell... Uh, they were only 8 gold, and that's, uh, pretty good. If I call the money gold, that's just, you know, standard RPG shorthand for money. Herbs will actually be a pretty good source of healing for well into, like, halfway through the game, just because they're so cheap. 
Eventually, you'll be able to upgrade to the second tier healing item that heals like 100 HP, but that's still a ways off. Anyways. Who keeps saying that? I have a feeling we should heal up. Uh. Uh oh. Looks like we've got harpies. And this is our first boss. Well, boss is. There's three of them. Palo, Peach, and Pooty. Now, for this first turn, we're going to have Jeff defend. By the way, you access the defend command just by holding the right trigger. And then we'll cast defense up on him. Like I said, these enemies are going to focus pretty much exclusively on him. So you want to uh, get defense up so that he's taking less damage. Also, you may have noticed they misspelled Pooty there. That uh, happens pretty frequently. <laughs> and I don't mean just specifically with this boss, I mean very frequently they cannot decide on the spelling for a boss's name. Let's use another herb on Jeff just to get him up to full. This turn is a good opportunity to heal up or set up defense up if you haven't already since they start attacking each other. Alright, and from this point on, the fight just becomes really simple. Now we just attack. And it looks like they made up. But yeah, as you can see, defense up helped immensely. They're doing less damage than when I was actually defending. The way statistics like offense and defense work in this game, there's kind of like a threshold going on where once offense gets past a certain point over defense, your damage starts to shoot up. But conversely, if defense is a number that's higher than the offense going against it, uh, it can actually cause the damage to drop off really quickly. Oh, that's one down. I know these uh, harpies all have different HP. I don't know who's strictly the weakest one, though. And this should take care of it. There we go! Alright, so yeah, not too difficult boss fight, if you know what to do. And Jeff goes to level 6. So is Bo. Well, I'd call that a roaring success. Yeah, but they did say they ate cats and dogs. We don't even know what Susie is, though. Well, that'll be something we'll have to ponder for next time. So when we come back, we will finish our trip through Mount Fubi. I hope you enjoyed watching, and please, have a nice day.